Am I back on YouTube? What the, is this thing even working? Are you working? What the hell? Hey, YouTubers and RV fans. It's Patty from the Patty Wagon Travels. And let's, uh, let's see here. How you doing? Let's see if we can get this thing working. Um, been a while since I've been on YouTube, so you'll have to bear with me if I have a little bit of challenge doing a video. I haven't done a video in so long, I almost forgot how to do it. But anyway, I'm back. The channel's back, it's recharged, new logos, new branding, new everything. So stay tuned because I'm gonna give you an update that's probably gonna take three parts because it's been three years. So a year for part one, a year for part two, and a year for part three. Hey, YouTubers and RV fans. So here I am back in the saddle again, I guess that's what you could say. Uh, I'm filming today from my new RV. It's an Imagine, uh, Grand Design Imagine 22 MLE. It's a 22 foot RV, beautiful. I'm gonna give you guys a full tour, uh, probably in part two, maybe part three, but anyway. Um, it's been three years. I can't believe it's been so long, but it really has. I think since the uh, COVID pandemic, and uh, all the different things that went on. Um, uh, well, let's just do this. When I last left you, I was parked in Louisiana in my mother's driveway, and we were headed out to North Carolina to go to my son's wedding. And this was in March, well, actually, it was actually late February of 2020. Um, Mom and I got up to uh, Asheville, North Carolina for my son and his wife's wedding. And um, it was about that same time that we started hearing rumors about things shutting down and people getting COVID. And so uh, mom and I were pretty, you know, nervous about all that. So we, we did have a great reservation in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and they were so gracious to us. They really were. Um, and uh, my, son's, my son and his, his new wife's, uh, but his fiance at the time, their venue had um, canceled everything. So we were actually up there to visit and you know see the sites and hang out for about a month um, when all this was going down. So, but surprisingly enough, uh, the two of them didn't let the COVID pandemic sway them at all, and um, we did a virtual wedding. Everybody was on cell phones. I had them all set up on the counter and even his officiant was um, in Florida at the time and couldn't get flights up. So uh, the officiant was on video as well. Um, it was probably the best kind of wedding you could ever go to. But after the wedding was done, uh, mom and I kind of hung out in North Carolina and um, we're getting real anxious about everything that was going on. Everything was getting shut down and closed down. And so, I think we were probably into middle March, maybe late March by then of 2020. And um, I told mom one early morning, I said, let's pack up and let's get the hell out of Dodge. We're sneaking out. And so we did. Um, we actually drove back to Louisiana. Um, and I gotta tell you something, you wanna talk about Erie? There was literally nobody on the road. Of course, we were, we were vigilantes, I guess, because we were, driving back from North Carolina to uh, Louisiana. And I remember um, going through Atlanta on the way back and it was literally unbelievable. Now, if you've ever driven through Atlanta, you know that it's 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 back-to-back -back cars, stop and go traffic. I mean, it's just, it's a nightmare to travel through Atlanta. Uh, God knows I've done it more times than I want to tell you about. But anyway, um, literally there was nobody on the road. You may have seen one maybe or two cars. I mean, we cruised through Atlanta so fast that I didn't even remember we went through Atlanta. Um, we got down to Mobile. We spent the night at a shutdown Walmart, you know, just waiting for there to be a knock on the door. Um, and there wasn't. We got up early the next morning and then we drove to mom's house. Now I parked in her pad, if you recall from previous videos, I had laid a cement pad so that it had a place to go in between my trips back to Arizona and Florida. And so Louisiana was a nice central stopping point. But anyway, uh, I digress. Okay, so I had been in Louisiana probably about three or four weeks 
and um, maybe five, may, uh, about four weeks, I guess. And I had just, I had had enough. I really did. I, I didn't want to be in Louisiana, but everything was being shut down. I didn't know where to go. Um, I'm sure many of you RVers that are out there are listening to the story or were probably in the same boat that I was in. Um, literally, where do you go? Um, all the different RV parks were closing down uh, or they were you know, sheltering in place. They weren't really taking any more um, RVers. And so I kind of felt like, well, here I am stuck. And I thought, you know what? I really need to either find a, um, an RV spot where I can either purchase it so that it's mine or purchase a home base, something like that. I really didn't know at that moment what my plans were, but I knew that I needed to do something because I couldn't sit in Louisiana for the rest of my life. And of course, you know, back in that period of time, you were thinking that this thing could last forever or for a long time. Um, anyway, so what happened is I called my daughter. Uh, she lives in Nashville. And um, she said, uh, I said to her, I said, listen, can I hang out in your driveway while I look for uh, some, you know, property? Um, because I knew I wanted to live in the Tennessee, uh, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, Georgia uh, trifecta in that area because I really love the, the, you know, the mountains. You have Lookout Mountain there, and you also have some temperate climates, and uh, I just really love the area. So she said, "Oh, sure, come on up." So I ended up parking in her driveway for, I want to say, a good two months, maybe three months, and. Um, it was amazing to be up there. I got to visit with her, her partner, and you know, the three of us just had a great time. Um, and we would go and look at properties together and, and whatnot. And remember, I'm just looking for, I really didn't know what I was looking for, actually. I mean, I just was looking for a piece of property, preferably one that was already laid out for an RV, that was unrestricted. But nonetheless, um, I spent probably a good two, two and a half months just looking for property. I finally found property in a really rural, rural area of Tennessee, about 60 miles outside of Nashville. And the minute I walked through it, I knew this was the property. Um, and it had a three bedroom house um, with it. Um, I really didn't feel like I was able to make videos uh, at that point because I really didn't know what to say. Um, you know, I mean, the whole premise of my channel was really RV life and living on the road. And here I am now in a home base and I'm like, okay, so what do I do? You know, do I show them how I'm fixing the electric or I'm re-landscaping the front yard or, I mean, you know, what to do? I mean, at this point I had two RVs. And so if you recall, I had the Mallard, which is a 17 foot travel trailer. Um, and the Mallard was, um, actually in storage in Louisiana and so once things kind of calmed down a little bit and, and traveling was again allowed um, my son and I my son Alex and I went to uh, Louisiana and picked up the Mallard now the Mallard was had been in storage by that point for two years and so it was kind of nice to get down there hook the Mallard up and get it on the road uh, up here to um, to Tennessee so we got the Mallard back to the house and got it parked. Um, I have some, some pictures that I'll show you of the canopy or the carport for the house. Um, when I bought the house originally, the, the canopy or the carport was really low. And so uh, I knew when I looked at the house in the beginning that I was gonna have to get that raised because of the RVs. So what I did is I contracted with a company to come out and, and raise it to 14 feet. Um, I can tell you what, when those guys were up on those, um, those metal bracing and they're flowing back and forth, I told the guy, I was taking video. I'm like, I can't even take video on this. Um, uh, because I, if somebody fell off, it would just be catastrophic. So, but anyway, they were consummate professionals, um, literally got the uh, carport raised in a couple of hours. And, uh, in fact, rebraced it for me, put some, uh, 30, some additional 36 inch, um, spikes into the carport so it was really well um, um, adhered to the ground and what was really cool is I was able to park both the Class C and the travel trailer under the carport which was very nice. So of course through all of this I'm maintaining the Class C um, you know because I'm thinking to myself well I'm gonna probably sell the travel trailer and then you know just get back out on the road with the Class C 
you know, because I really loved the Surge. The Surge was a great RV. And um, so throughout the winter, you know, I winterized and unwinterized, expecting that I was going to get out on the road. And none of that ever materialized. So at the end of last year, I finally just made the decision, you know, listen, I have to do something. So what I did was um, I actually sold the Class C, which was wonderful. And so now some new family is going to be enjoying it. It was a wonderful RV altogether. And then I took the, um, the Mallard and I traded it in at Cookville RV and Marine um, up in Cookville, Tennessee. Great group of people up there. Um, you know, they, I, I, that's where I, when I got the, um, the uh, Grand Design Imagine. Uh, I knew when I walked through the Grand Design Imagine that I was going to love this trailer because it was really perfectly laid out for somebody like me who is, you know, on the road, who is working from the road remotely. And um, it basically had everything I needed right at my fingertips. So uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when I give you a, a tour of it. I'm sure those of you who haven't seen the Grand Design Imagine 22 MLE, um, you can look it up. It's, it's really a great uh, travel trailer. So I got the travel trailer, parked it under the canopy, um, the carport, and there it sat. And there it sat. And there it sat. Every opportunity I had to get in it and get going, I just didn't. Um, for one reason or another, work commitments, family commitments. In the midst of all this, my son and his wife had a baby. And so for the first time in my life, I became a grandfather. Now, I gotta tell you, that was the most exhilarating thing that happened to me next to the birth of my kids. So, um, you know, it was, it's, been, it's been really interesting learning my role as a grandfather because I'm not quite sure what that role is or what I'm supposed to do. Um, it's one thing when you're a parent, you know what you're supposed to do, but when you're a grandfather, it's like, okay, what's my role now? So throughout this last year, I've been spent spending time learning about being a grandfather and actually it does come somewhat naturally. So he's a cute little kid, you know, um, full of energy. You know, we just got done celebrating his first year birthday and um, man, does he take after um, my son, most definitely. But anyway, I digress. Um, okay, so where was I at? Okay, so baby, RV, Okay, so anyway, this last, um, I want to say, when was this? Uh, what are we in? We're in almost in September. It's the end of August. And Mike and Dawn came up and visited me from Mississippi. And what a great reunion to have with them. I hadn't seen them in close to two years. You know, of course, I think of Dawn and Mike as my brother and sister. I mean, they are such incredible people. Um, they decided to come up um, as they were making their trip up to uh, Michigan in the Midwest and they spent about three weeks with us. Well, Mike is such a motivator and he got me motivated. It actually kind of kicked me in the butt a little bit. And so what I ended up doing is um, getting the trailer ready to go um, traveling. And so Mike was a great help. We sanitized the water system, um, you know, de-winterized it, got it all set up and ready to go, tested every system. And at that time, um, I was looking at uh, upgrading my truck because I was currently still in the F-150 and um, got a great deal on an F-250 Super Duty and um, I, I bit the bullet and I got it. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. That deal was so amazing because they traded in my F-150 for no loss and they gave me a huge incentive deal um, for the Super Duty. Anyway, I hooked that Super Duty up to the trailer and man, what a difference. You know, you're just driving around, you don't even know that that trailer's on the back of your truck. So, um, for the baby's first year birthday, I decided I would book a KOA uh, over in Asheville, and I stayed at the East, East Asheville KOA. What a great place that is. You know, um, it was hugely, hugely expensive. But, again, it was the baby's first birthday, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet, and I'm just gonna have to pay it. Um, and I stayed there for, I want to say a good two weeks. And in that two weeks, I got to spend time with um, my son and his wife and play with the baby and, and be grandfather. So I guess I'm, my name is Grandpa Pal. So um, 
anyway, uh, it was a great two weeks. But what was better than that, uh, uh, really, was the fact that Mike and Don really got me motivated to get back out on the road again. And getting the trailer hooked up and taking it on a 260-mile trip um, one way and setting it up and camping and working from the RV. I mean, it kind of reminded me about how much I love being on the road and how sad I was when this whole pandemic thing happened and I had to come off the road. So fast forward to um, the two weeks were over with and I got back on the road and headed home, parked the RV and thought to myself, all right, where's my next trip? So with that said, stay tuned for part two, but let me give you a couple channel tips. Uh, with this recharged uh, paddy wagon travels, it's my intention to put a video out every Sunday. So on Sundays, expect to get a video from me. As I'm catching up, I may post some catch up videos like part two um, before Sunday. But typically as the channel gets up and rolling again, and as I look for um, growing the channel with new subscribers, you can expect a video from me um, really about all kinds of content. I'm gonna stay focused on the RV life because that's what my intent is, but I'm gonna give you kind of content about everything. So I'm looking forward to uh, re-engaging with all of my amazing subscribers who have hung around for three years waiting for another video. And I thank you so much for that. You can't imagine how wonderful it was to put up my new introductory uh, video uh, for the channel as I rebranded the channel and to see that the likes and the views just were through the roof. So thank you so much for your support, for staying with me through this last three years. And uh, I'm really looking forward to some new adventures in the future. And I hope that you all come along with me. So stay tuned for part two.